All right, here's the innards of the PC. Uh, right now I just have one 7200 RPM drive in there for now. Uh, four gigs of RAM in there for now. An Athlon 620 quad core processor at 2.6 gigahertz. The Seton uh, capture card. A NVIDIA uh, GeForce 210. And I just put a larger heat sink and a ball bearing fan on here. Um, and then a fan controller here on the side to keep it qu all quiet. Uh, it all runs around 100 degrees. Nothing's overclocked, nothing crazy. I uh, can't remember what watts this power supply is. I think it's like four or 500 watt power supply with a 120 millimeter fan on it. Very simple PC. Uh, you can probably get all these parts on eBay um, for less than 500 bucks. Uh, it's running Windows 7 Home Edition. Nothing crazy. Very simple. Uh, eventually I'm going to upgrade and put a Blu-ray drive in here. Uh, I was going to do a noise comparison, but the Samsung DVR is very quiet. Uh, you know, it has no fans in it. You know, all you hear is hard disk noise. Of course, this is going to have fans in it. Um, one thing that you'll notice, I added a clock here because just for the reason that you know, I'm just so used to the DVR having a clock. So, a little $10 clock from Target works well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a cold boot and show you how fast this. Uh, loads compared to the standard DVR from Time Warner. Uh, it just seems like the, the standard DVR from Time Warner has to pair and check for updates and do 50 other things while it's booting up and it takes a very 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 long time. Um, I'll go ahead and just uh, press the power button on this, back up and watch how long it takes to boot. Also, on a side note, I'm not using anything, any tricks like fast boot or anything like that. Standby modes. This is just a solid cold boot with an extremely budget PC and a budget hard drive. Go ahead and use our Logitech remote here. We'll go down to live TV. It takes a few seconds for live TV to boot uh, from a cold boot because it's because of Microsoft's Play Ready software and Time Warner's encryption process. But there you go. And just the picture quality, it, it just blows the DVR from Time Warner out of, out of the water. It just, it looks crystal clear. And sound is crystal clear coming out of the computer as well. To edit your, to edit your uh, 
scheduled uh, items, it's kind of clunky because you got to go through like three menus to get there. So once you get to recorded TV, you click on view scheduled. Then you have to go down to series. And then under series, you select your show. So this is where you set your priority, um, you know, which show will record over whatever show, you know, for your uh, tuner priority. But once you get to this point, you can set series settings. And under here, you can set it so it records on new or repeat. You can tell it what channels to record it on, airtime, when to delete it, uh, how long to keep it. Um, but the only bad part is you can't access this directly from the guide like the time where a box allows you to. All right, one thing a lot of people don't show you on these setups or even mention online is this device. This is the Cisco uh, cable tuner. This device, at least from what Time Warner says, is to enable your digital cable broadcast. So any of your digital cable package shows, uh, this unlocks and allows you to view those channels. Um, this device costs nothing for you to get this from Time Warner. It's included in the cable card cost, which is $2 in our region. Uh, the way it works is it has three inputs. It has an in and out, cable in and out. It has a USB connection that goes to your computer. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the USB connection does. I guess it's for the Play Ready uh, encryption decryption software from Microsoft so it can encrypt and decrypt the uh, channels, uh, the upper HD channels. Um, it's very low powered. It doesn't get warm. It really doesn't do anything, but it's just like an in between device between your cable network and the computer. All right, this is going to be uh, stopping the DVR and booting the DVR back up from sleep mode. All right, a lot of people ask if the machine will reboot or wake up when a recording comes on, and yes, it will. Microsoft actually designed and developed the guide uh, so it'll boot the machine up a few minutes early so like I think it's like four minutes before scheduled recording uh, so that way it can sync and that way it can get the play ready decryption encryption software paired with your Time Warner um, T uh, TV tuner. So right now the machine's sleeping. If you notice there, uh, the light's blinking. We're going to go ahead and turn it back on. Let's see here. We'll just click the remote. There you go takes three seconds or something like that, three, four seconds for it to boot up from sleep. And then go to live TV. If you notice, it says viewing or listing uh, conflict, no tuner available. That's because it takes the tuner bo box over there to sync up with Time Warner. And once it does, the show will pop up. So it takes a total of a minute, a minute and a half for you to get access to the TV after a boot up from standby. And there's nothing you really do about that. That's because of Microsoft and Time Warner and the DRM software. I'll show you the guide. There's two different guides that you can uh, access. There's 
the mini on screen or the large guide uh, which takes up the whole screen and just has the show running in the background and your other option here is right here with the page up and page down button it'll access a two channel guide so that way you can just quickly flip through say you're down with the local channels and you're looking for a football game or whatever you're able to just flip through you know your all your lower channels real quickly and you can do all your upper channels too I'm just using this as an example so like you you find like you know you don't want to watch today's show and you want to watch Rachel Ray let's go on there and select it and we'll go ahead and flip right over And we'll go ahead and do um, recorded television. And we will select a show. I'm just going to show you how fast it loads a show after you select it. It's as soon as you press the button. Same with any of the other controls on here. It's as, as fast as you can press the buttons on the remote. But it's nice that it has integrated Netflix. You can, if you have a bunch of movie rips, you can access it. You can float through a pretty unique uh, on-screen guide. You have your music, uh, Boxy. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and click on Boxy. It's uh, interesting. It's not as well built as Windows Media Center. But from here you can access array of apps, you know, you can use YouTube or if there's something like uh, Revision 3 television, you can go in here and you can, you know, watch a show, I don't know, we'll do Techzilla. And it all loads pretty quick. I'm, I'm using a LAN connection. I never had good luck using wireless, but you can see how fast videos load. No lag. And then when you're done with uh, Boxy, you just back out to the uh, main menu. So we'll just back out here. We'll go to the little power app and just hit exit and watch. As soon as you exit out of Boxy, should load right back into Windows Media Center. And there you go. Alright, this is going to be a demonstration of the cold boot for the Time Warner box. Just note the time here. 10.16. Now the reason why I'm doing this is you're going to see how ridiculously long this thing takes to turn on after the power goes out. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera down here. Right plug this bad boy in. And I'll probably do a time lapse at this point, just to show you how long this thing takes to start up. It looks like at 10.24 the box has fully loaded. So let's go ahead and take my remote here and we'll do 
a uh, cold boot or a boot from standby. Change to a channel. And the channel chain speeds are about the same. And let's go ahead and do. A show. Let's see, we'll go ahead and click. Click play. And it's still loading. And now we got the video loaded. We'll do fast forward. Let's see how long it takes to stop after I hit play. And we'll see how fast it is to stop. Wait for it. And we'll do stop and save and see how long that takes. So my complaints about this. Well, one is just the overall speed power goes out in your house or if this DVR powers itself off it takes a solid 10 to 15 minutes for it to power itself on. Two, the audio quality and video quality just don't look as good as running it off the PC. Three is the overall navigation speed. I do not like it. Right now, from a fresh boot, it'll respond well and move pretty quick through the menus. Give it a day and it'll be slow. And you'll be calling Time Warner asking them why it's slow and what are they going to do. They just reboot the, the uh, cable box and it's back to normal, moving as it should be. And then another couple of days down the road, it'll be laggy and slow again. The advantages of the cable box, however, are the standby boot time is faster than the PC. 